Hey everybody, Eric Wagner here with another video. This video is going to be part two in a three-part series taking a look at ArcGIS solutions. So in the first part, we discuss what are ArcGIS solutions and, and how you can deploy one. Uh, this part is going to take a look at how we can actually work with and implement this particular solution. In this case, it's the water distribution data management for ArcGIS Online solution. And then part three is going to take a look at how we can go about expanding it. Now, um, in the event that you didn't watch the first part video, it's actually in the link down below. You can take a look at it. And the solution we, that we did deploy there was this online solution for uh, water distribution. Uh, just so you are aware, there are similar solutions as well for sewer and storm. And in the event that you deployed one of those solutions instead of the one for water, uh, please know that what we're about to take a look at here, the different maps, apps, data, and workflows, uh, they're exactly the same across all three of those sectors. So regardless of which one you deployed, uh, this video is still going to, re going to remain relevant for you. So enough of this talking, let's go ahead and dive in to see how we can use this solution. So here we are. Uh, this is where we left off in the last video, that after you've deployed the solution, you get something that looks like this. Now, this unto itself isn't necessarily the uh, most helpful, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the content tab here, and what you'll see if you come into content is the solution gave you a folder, and this folder is nice because it contains all of the data and map products that the solution contains. And if you go through it, you'll actually see that there really is quite a bit in here. Um, the goal of this video is going to be to highlight what is most important to help you utilize this solution to create data that people across your whole organization um, can use quickly. And most notably, I'm going to focus on some of the web mapping applications. So if you take a look in here, uh, you can actually see in this second column what all these different items are. Some of them are web maps, some of them are applications, dashboards, etc. So we're going to be focusing again on most of those that are these web mapping applications. Um, so first and foremost, uh, what you're probably going to want to have people be able to access is some sort of viewer. Uh, this way by which people can access, use, see, and understand your data. And so if I were to click into the water distribution viewer here, um, I then have the ability to view this application. And what the viewer looks like is something like this. Right now it's pretty uh, bare bones, uh, not particularly exciting. Um, but as we start to collect data in some of the later applications, this is really going to begin to come to life. Another way by which people can access data in your ArcGIS Online organization to be able to see some of these metrics is going to be through the Water Distribution Dashboard. And this application looks something like this. Again, not particularly exciting, but it's really meant to be this inventory application. And again, as we start to collect data later on in this demo, we're going to see that this is going to update based upon what you contribute or edit to the underlying data sets within the applications. So speaking of adding data, how would we go about that? Well, if you come and take a look in here, uh, one of the web mapping applications provided to you is the water distribution editor. So if I were to open up this application, we would get something that looks like this. Now this looks pretty similar to the viewer we were looking at a couple moments ago, except this actually allows us to add data into the map itself. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to zoom into uh, my little neck of the woods over here um, in southeastern Pennsylvania. And notice as I zoom in, I now start to have the ability to actually draw in different features. So I'm going to come here, we're going to take a look at uh, Johnson Road. and. Notice over here now, if I want to maybe draw in a water line that runs along Johnson Road there in the center of the screen, I can begin to scroll through here and find different assets that are provided with the solution. But if I want to, I could also search for them as well. So I'll search for main, and I can see here's distribution main. And now just by clicking, I can click once, and then click twice, and actually double click to finish this feature. And now there we have it in the middle of the screen, that light blue line is our new feature, my new distribution main. And on the left hand side now, I have the ability to update some information about it, uh, such as the diameter. So I'll say, you know, this is an eight inch, and I'll say that it's ducta iron. And I can fill out a whole bunch of other attributes here as well. But for right now, I'm just gonna fill out those couple attributes and press save. And just like that, I have a new water main. In the event that maybe I want a different base map that makes this a little bit more clear than this uh, kind of simplified map here, I can click on these four boxes in the upper right hand corner and I can change this to be a different type of base map. I'll go with imagery hybrid. This will provide me with road names 
as well as uh, some background aerial imagery. So just like that, we've added in our first main and even changed our base map here. Uh, maybe I want to add a valve here at the intersection of Plymouth Road and Johnson Road. Well, in that case, then, I'll just search for a valve. And I can see there's my system valve option. And if I press Control to enable snapping, that will ensure that my valve is actually added to the end of this line. And we can see there's a little crosshair that forms just above my cursor. So I'll click, and we see a little circle appear there. That's where my valve is going to be. So we can see its diameter is 8 inch. Uh, I'll set this to be a ball valve, fill out any other attributes as necessary, and then press the Save button. And just like that, we'll see that we've already added um, a new uh, water main as well as a valve. So here's where this is nice. This is all going to tie into those other applications we were looking at just a few moments ago. So for example, if I go back into my dashboard, which right now is, again, pretty unexciting, but if I give this a refresh, what we'll see now is the miles of main will update to reflect that new main segment that we drew in on Johnson Road, so almost half a mile worth of main, and there's that system valve that we digitized or added in as well. Or I can come down here and take a look at uh, water main information, and we can start to see some additional metrics here as well. So as we add in or edit data, uh, we can see that our dashboards and other applications are going to update. Or I can come here into my viewer, I'll give this a refresh as well. And if I again zoom into uh, that part of our territory, southeastern Pennsylvania, where we're working, I can see there's that uh, water line and there's that valve at the end. I can click on it and I can see it's 8 inch dot dot iron pipe. So just like that, that's one way that we can begin to view our data and begin to edit our data. But that's certainly not the end of the line. Uh, this application also provides a number of maps that can be used with mobile applications to record and collect data as well. Um, one such map for that is the Water Distribution Asset Collector Map. Now, this map is not intended to be used within ArcGIS Online, but rather used by mobile workers out in the field using an iOS or Android device and the ArcGIS Field Map application. So if I go ahead and bring up my iPad screen here, uh, I can actually see that within some of the groups that this solution provided to me, um, I have access to maps. So if I tap on water distribution field users, I'll actually see that there's that water distribution asset collector map. So I'll come in here, and now what I'll be able to do is at my current location, the GPS location from my mobile device, I'll be able to record assets. So if at my current location, let's say I wanted to record something like a, a service connection or a water meter, I could do that. So by tapping the big blue button in the lower right hand corner, I can come in here and just like in that web editor, I can start to look for assets that I might want to collect while I'm out in the field. So we'll say that this is a residential service connection. I'll tap on that. If I wanted to, I can use my uh, mobile device's built-in camera to take a picture and then fill out any additional attributes as necessary. We'll throw in an install date there and press the submit button in the upper right hand corner. So just like that now, even out in the field, I've been able to record assets as well. So if I were to come into my water distribution viewer uh, one more time here and just give this a refresh to again show all of the connectivity of our data, uh, I'll be able to come back into my service territory down here and I'll see that there's that service connection that we just recorded a couple moments ago. So again, data that's coming in from the field or from this web editor, all being made visible for people to see across this distribution viewer. So hopefully you can begin to see how this is so powerful. Now, I do want to show one last way by which we can add data into uh, this system of record. And it's the way I recommend doing this most, and that's using ArcGIS Pro itself. So if I were to go back into the content of everything that this solution provided with us, one of the items that I would see is the Water Distribution Data Manager, this project package. So if I were to click on that, I would get this page here, and I'm going to click Open in ArcGIS Pro. It gives me this little item that automatically downloads. I'm going to open this, and this is going to be an ArcGIS Pro project. So let's give this a couple seconds to open. And here we are in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, I can see in the upper right hand corner that I am currently logged into my ArcGIS Online account. 
And on the left hand side, I have all of my layers, but they have these red exclamation points next to them. Uh, so I need to fix this. So this will be kind of a two step process. Uh, so I'm first going to click on the red exclamation point next to map notes, click on my content, and then scroll down until I find the water distribution data management for ArcGIS Online folder. And then I'll come in here for water map notes managing. I'll double click on this, click on map notes, and then press OK. So that'll fix the first layer. Uh, I can fix the rest of them then in bulk. So for service connection, I'll click on the red exclamation point, my content, water distribution data management for ArcGIS Online folder. And then I'm going to look for the water distribution system underscore editing layer, and then hunt for service connection, and press OK. We'll give this a couple seconds, and what it'll do is it'll repair all of the data sources in this map, so that way we can begin to do editing of data. And there we go. All the red exclamation points are gone, and now I'm going to be able to start adding in my data. Now, if I zoom into my little corner of the universe over here, uh, I'll actually begin to see, if I zoom in, uh, some of those assets that we've already collected, such as the main and the valve on Johnson Road. And if I were to zoom in a little bit further, we'd also be able to see that service connection appear here as well that we gathered out in the field. So now, if I want to do editing to be able to create and add features uh, within ArcGIS Pro, this is certainly going to be possible. And we can do a more robust editing with this environment than we could with that web editor. So if we want to do editing, uh, what I would want to do is I want to click on the Edit tab and then click on the Create a Feature button here. And it will give me this pane over here on the right-hand side that I can begin to work with. I'm also going to recommend that when you create data that you also have snapping turned on. So make sure that this is blue and that you have at least these first four options here in blue as well. So let's say I wanted to add in a water line that's running down uh, Plymouth Road here. And I'll even uh, kick this up a notch a little bit and we'll say we want to do this with aerial imagery turned on. So I'm going to go back into my map tab and I'm going to change my base map to just be imagery. And now over here, I can begin to search for whatever asset it is that I want to add in. So uh, I'll search for main, kind of like what we did before. I'll choose distribution main. And now each time I click, I'll be able to add a point along this line. So, you know, I'd want to zoom in more closely if I'm, you know, doing this from some other type of plan or something. But for the purpose of the demonstration, um, I'm just going to make this, you know, pretty quick here. And so, you know, I can click a couple times, add in these vertices. And notice that when I get up to this uh, system valve here, it kind of highlights it with this little ring and says system valve point. That's snapping to ensure that uh, this next point that I add in this line has the same location as this system valve. So I'll double click. It'll create that new feature for me. And I'll even highlight it in light blue. Now, if I want to update the attribution for this, I can click on the Attributes button here on the Map tab. This is also available to us within the Edit tab as well. So I can click on Attributes, and for my selected feature, this water main, I can change information about it, such as its diameter, um, its uh, material, uh, or any other types of information that I want. And we'll just grab today's date for this. So now you can even see the label updated to be 8-inch DIP for 8-inch ductile iron pipe. When I'm happy with these edits, you know, I could come up here and I could press the Save button. Um, but we're going to add in one more feature as well. We'll say Create Features. Let's add in a hydrant. And I can say, you know, here's a fire hydrant. And maybe we know that there's a fire hydrant over here by this uh, school. I can click to add that as well. It'll say Create New Features. It'll highlight it in blue for me to show that it's selected. And again, I could come in here and add in my attributes for this, uh, provide whatever information is necessary for this um, to keep within our system of record. And once I'm done with those edits, again, I can press the Save button here on the Edit tab. And these are going to save the changes made to my data. That is to say, the line and the hydrant that I added in. And what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to save my ArcGIS Pro project so that in the future, if I access this, um, I will be able to pick up right where I left off. So we'll save our project. And now to kind of wrap up this video, 
what we'll do is we'll go back into ArcGIS Online and we can take a look at our uh, dashboard here for hydrants. It currently says zero. Um, I'm going to refresh this and we'll see now um, that if we come in here, fire hydrants in our first general tab is going to say, you know, fire hydrants one. There's that service connection that we collected out in the field, that system valve we digitized earlier, the two main segments that we put in both through the web editor and ArcGIS Pro. And then if I come down here, I can start to see information about the water main. Um, we have one service connection, didn't draw any, any laterals, so that's all going to be blank. Uh, and then I can see the information about my fire hydrant information as well. So the dashboard updated regardless of where data is coming from. So all of our data is brought together under one data set that's being accessed through these different applications. Or if we just wanted the real simple viewer, again, I could go ahead and refresh this, zoom into uh, one last time my neck of the woods here, and I'll be able to see there's all those assets that I've drawn in my different main segments, valve, hydrants, uh, and even the service connection down here as well. So in the event that maybe as I've gone through this demo, you've kind of said, hey, Eric, why do you have to keep like zooming into that particular part of southeastern Pennsylvania? Can you configure the map to do that? Uh, and the answer is yes. Or maybe you've taken a look through some of the attributes and you've thought like, hey, this is a really great starting point, but we also at our utility record, you know, attribute X, Y, and Z as well. How can we incorporate that? Well, some of the ways by which we can expand the solution is what I'm going to cover in the, in the third part of this three-part series. So as for this part, though, what did we cover? Well, we took a look at what the solution has to offer. We took a look at the different applications, including the viewer, the dashboard. Uh, we saw the editor. Uh, we saw field data collection with field maps. And then also we took a look at how we can access this same data set in ArcGIS Pro, which will allow us additional editing tools as well as provide us with uh, spatial analysis capabilities if that is also something you're interested in as well. So this is a longer video, but it really covered a lot and was really meant to cover a lot of that functionality that comes with the solution out of the box that we really just deployed with a couple clicks in the first video. Um, so, you know, thanks for hanging in there on this longer video. And as always, thanks for watching.